Ugh, this is not good news. GameSpot recently did an interview with Genshin Impact developers and they were talking Endgame and a lot of other content and let's just say things didn't go so well in that interview. We're going to go over the questions and answers from this interview, why players are upset, and what this means for the future of the game. I'll also give my take on what could be some possible solutions for these issues that would make players a lot happier. With that said, let's dive in. Now the first thing I want to say is this interview actually came out a few days ago, but I didn't want to post this video because it would have come out right before the 1 million view thank you video. And my intention was to celebrate with all of you, show my appreciation, and give a little bit back. And I felt if I posted this video right before that one, it would really kill the vibe. So I'm doing it a few days later. I hope you can forgive me, but I do think it's important that we cover this. With that being said, we'll move on to the questions and answers and why people are so riled up. The first question is about the version updates 3.0 and 3.1 being shorter than typical. And the answers the devs give is yes, the game patches are shorter, but it's not going to impact the quality of the patches at all. Now their answer doesn't go into why the patches are shorter, but for those of you who are curious, it's because on Ayaka's last rerun, the patch was very, very long, so they're just trying to make up for lost time. And overall, I definitely don't think the shorter patches have impacted the game quality at all. There's still a ton of content and the shorter patches even makes it feel like there's even more to do. And as far as the quality of the content, it seems like it has actually increased. And maybe you don't necessarily agree with that, but I think most people would agree that the quality hasn't diminished any due to the shorter patch schedule. So first answer from the game developers, pretty solid, nothing really controversial there. But then we get to question two, and oh boy, this is where the game developers drop something that not a lot of players wanted to hear. So let me just read you the question and answer so you can get the full effect. GameSpot asks, Currently, the Spiral Abyss is the only true endgame content for players at high adventure ranks. Are there any plans to release new, permanent endgame content in the same vein as the Spiral Abyss? And to which the developers replied, the Spiral Abyss is one of the most effective ways for players to test out their party composition and combat strength. If we design another type of permanent endgame content that is similar to the Spiral Abyss, it might end up creating excessive anxiety for our players. Not everyone is interested in Musk Grief or the Spiral Abyss. Just like the Genius Invocation TCG we unveiled in the special program for version 3.2, we are also working on designing more interesting gameplay in the future. As an open world game, Genshin Impact has a natural compatibility with various types of gameplay, which gives us confidence in the long-term operation. Now, the second paragraph in their answer is basically just saying that they're designing other types of gameplay, so that's fine as it is. But the first paragraph, this is really what's getting people upset. The fact that the game developers are worried about creating other endgame combat style content like the Spiral Abyss because it would quote unquote cause players excessive anxiety just seems disingenuous and honestly like a very political answer. And what I mean by that is that at first glance this answer sounds like it's coming from a place of caring, but it is not. However, this answer shows that the developers are keenly aware and that they know the truth that many players feel, but the company's actions show the exact opposite sentiment. And here's the hard truth that people understand and why they're upset. Hoyoverse wants you to feel anxiety. Having players feel anxious is the nature of gacha games and it's how Hoyoverse grew to a multi-billion dollar company in just a few years. Their business model causes people to have their fear of missing out and feel like they can finally get what they want if they just spend a little bit more. And of course, if they wanted people to experience less anxiety, they could adjust their game systems and their business model to be less anxiety inducing. But I think the key word in this response is excessive. The devs don't want players to feel excessive anxiety because having a certain amount of anxiety is actually good for their business model and will drive up sales of certain characters and increase their profits. But if players are too anxious, then they'll just quit the game because they feel like they can never get ahead. So would more endgame content cause more players more anxiety? I don't necessarily think so. In my experience, there's two major sources of anxiety within Genshin. 
The first of which is simply not being strong enough. The second of which is not having enough time to accumulate the primo gems to wish for the characters and or weapons that they want. And both of these are very valid concerns, but Genshin is a game where you can actually beat the hardest levels of content using only 4 star characters. And I feel like the answer the devs gave to this question sort of split the community. And I want to address the different concerns because I do feel they're important to understand. On one side, you have players who say, This is terrible. I love the combat system. I love doing all sorts of fun party compositions. I want more types of endgame, not just the Spiral Abyss. And then there's other players who say, This is fine. The Spiral Abyss is very difficult. It seems like it's just a trap to get you to spend a bunch of money. And I don't want something else that I feel like I have to do. Otherwise, I'm going to be missing out on a bunch of rewards, but it's going to be super difficult. Now, the major assumption in this whole discussion that both the devs and the players are making is that endgame content in Genshin would basically be a reskin or a different version of the Spiral Abyss. Now, I think we should clarify that that is not what endgame content actually is. It is not extremely hard content that 90% of the player base can't clear unless they wail out. That would definitely be really bad for the game, and people really did hate it when Hoyoverse tried implementing really hard content back in the Hypostatic Symphony event. And something like 60% of players don't really even try to do Abyss upon reset, so it makes sense not to make endgame content extremely difficult. But again, that's not what endgame content is. Endgame content is not extremely hard, difficult content that you can only do once you reach the top pinnacle of every character build, every team build in the entire game. Endgame content is just simply something that is a repeatable game system that you can do once you finish the main story. Now this answer makes it out that Spiral Abyss is the only form of endgame content in Genshin, and this was targeting the Spiral Abyss directly. But the truth is, that's not the only endgame content in Genshin, but it is one that players often think of first, and sometimes as the only form of endgame content. But the truth is, we actually have several forms of endgame content. It's just that they may not be as popular or as exciting as the Spiral Abyss. Because again, we're looking for something that we can do that's repeatable after we finish the main story. We have various game systems that could be considered endgame content. For example, farming artifacts is definitely a form of endgame content. Even though it's not very exciting, it's definitely something that you're doing a lot in the endgame. And along with that goes building new characters and new teams. And then there's also weekly bosses, reputation quests like bounties and requests and even the Serena Teapot. Now based on their answer, it seems like Hoyoverse is straying away from any combat endgame and then focusing more on other new development types of endgame systems. They specifically mention Genius Invocation, which is sort of a trading card battling game system, but it's likely also going to be the Teapot and it's also going to be a bunch of other new systems that we don't know anything about right now. So now I want to give my take on this whole situation. I think it's a shame that Hoyoverse is straying away from any sort of endgame combat system because honestly the combat system in Genshin is really really cool. And just because another endgame combat system in Genshin exists, it doesn't mean that people will necessarily do it. There are plenty of people who don't use the Serena Teapot or who don't do any reputation quests, but those are still in the game. I think what causes the most anxiety with any sort of endgame combat system like the Spiral Abyss is that there's primo gems tied to it. And if there were more endgame combat systems with marginal rewards, I think players would embrace it a lot more. Because if you can already 36 star the Spiral Abyss consistently, then everything else is a breeze. And in that situation, a lot of players won't be as motivated to build new teams or try new aspects of combat because they may not feel that the effort is worth it. After all, why would you want to build a level 90 character, give them a level 90 weapon, and increase their talents to the max level when you can just knock over an enemy with a single elemental skill? And the idea that they're not going to spend any time developing any future endgame combat system is a little bit disheartening because every single patch, players can see all the new things coming to the Serena Teapot and other little systems here and there, but nothing for the combat system. And that really is a shame because things like the Serena Teapot are not a groundbreaking game system, but the combat system in Genshin is something really special. The combat system is really easy to pick up and understand, but it's also extremely deep, while still only requiring a minimum amount of actions. 
can either normal attack, use your skill, use your burst, or switch. And as someone who's played Final Fantasy XIV and other MMOs, it is a breath of fresh air to have a combat system that is this simple, but this deep. Without requiring you to memorize four different rotations of 30 plus actions each, getting them out as fast as you can, but not too fast so you don't clip any of the other actions and mess up your whole rotation. But the Genshin combat system and elemental system can be just as deep and complex as that, and it only requires a few buttons. But it doesn't require you to have that deep understanding of all the complexities and you can still play really well. It's just really sad that the immensely rich potential of the Genshin combat system won't be fulfilled by anything in the future other than the Abyss. But I can't say I'm surprised. Now instead of just talking about all the negative implications of the game's future, I want to offer some solutions. And I know one of the concerns about developing other combat-based endgame systems is that it would take away from development time of other areas people really enjoy about the game. So I'll be limiting my proposed solutions to only things that would be very easy to implement. The first idea is to make a separate upscaled bounty system that's similar to world bosses from MMOs. Bounties are really interesting because they are randomized enemies with randomized buffs and debuffs. This adds a lot of variety and does require some amount of strategy. Except in its current form it really doesn't because you can beat the highest level bounty targets in just a few seconds. And as long as you're not trying to beat them with an element that they're immune to, they're pretty easy. But if these enemies were oversized and like level 150, it would feel pretty special to take one down. And because the bounties are in the overworld and they're co-opable, you can have fun with your friends and take them down together. If it took several minutes to beat one of these monsters, it could be a fun challenge. Because right now, it takes some players more time to teleport back and forth to the quest turn in NPC than it does to actually complete the bounty. But if there was an upscaled overworld version that you could do in co-op and would take several minutes to take down, that could be a lot of fun. Your friends could bring their strongest characters, you could work out a special strategy, you could use the environment to your advantage. And the rewards wouldn't have to be amazing because there is something inherently really fun about taking out a Samatril the size of Ejdaha. Another idea for more endgame battle content would come from some of the past events they've had. And the idea behind this is that it would be the opposite of the Spiral Abyss. It would be a survive as long as you can mode instead of destroy all the enemies as fast as humanly possible mode. So for example, instead of beating a series of enemies as fast as you can, you could instead fight high level enemies while meeting certain objectives. One example might be a level where you're constantly losing HP, but when you defeat enemies or trigger certain reactions a number of times, you restore a small amount of health, maybe an elite enemy spawns, and if you defeat the elite enemy, you get more time for the overall level, and then at the end, you get varying rewards based on how long you survived. These systems, buffs, and debuffs are already in the game and they've already been implemented before, but they would offer a really unique playstyle for endgame content and they would be just the opposite of Spiral Abyss and require different team building strategies. They would also make a lot of characters more useful like Chi Chi and C6 Barbara. And hey, making more characters useful is always a good thing. We had an event in 2.2 called Labyrinth Warriors. This was a roguelike event and many people were excited about this because they thought it might be the blueprint for some potential endgame system. And a roguelike dungeon crawler in Genshin would be really cool, especially with randomized buffs, debuffs, and the only thing you got to see beforehand was what buffs and debuffs the enemies might have. And even if we didn't get a roguelike endgame combat system, there's a lot of amazing dungeons and domains that we only do once, and it just seems wasteful. Those resources could be turned into repeatable instances that are randomized with some sort of buff or debuff that we can do on a weekly basis. And again, the great thing about these proposed solutions is that they've already been developed. The resources are already there. The developers would just have to change a line of code or two to change some enemy levels and then just turn them on and let them go live. Now, as far as rewards for these potential systems, I love free primo gems, but honestly, tying any more primo gems to end game combat systems would be a terrible idea. But there's plenty of other things they could do. My first thought is they could implement some sort of token system like we have with the sigils in Mondstadt and Leeway. And you could use these tokens to buy any manner of things in a weekly and monthly cycle. And this would be a great way for players to guarantee themselves things that are kind of hard to come by in the game. 
For example, they could buy one type of prototype billet per month, or they could buy a special elemental gemstone to help ascend their characters. Of course, Mora, artifact experience, adventure experience books, those are all good things too. But they could even include things like Dust of Azoth. The idea is that the players would not necessarily be swimming in all these rewards, but by doing this various type of endgame content, they could save up for something that they really wanted or needed. I don't know how many times someone's come into chat and they were just itching for that last bit of ascension material or a dream solvent or a prototype build so they can finally get the thing that they've really wanted for their character. If that was too much, they could implement other things that are just simply cosmetic like special name cards or wing gliders or pets as long-term achievements for more of this endgame combat content. They could even do something as simple as implementing titles. It's literally just a line of text above your head, but it still is a way to show off, and it takes basically no development time to implement something like a title system, especially compared with everything else they develop. I know this was a lot, and there's probably a lot of other things I could have covered, but I don't want to make this go too long, and it's already gonna go pretty long. But please leave your feelings towards the future of endgame combat systems in Genshin down below, and we'll talk more about it there. Now the third question talks about older characters being power creeps by newer characters, and the devs answer that if characters were only assessed by numerical strength then that could be an issue, but that there's a lot more gameplay elements that should be balanced and so they're not worried about power creep. But let's be real, a lot of the old 4 star characters are stronger than the new 5 star characters, so power creep's probably not going to be an issue. The next question talks about Dendro and how it's making the elemental system more unique, and then they ask if there's going to be any additional elemental reactions, maybe something with Geo? And the dev's answer is, yeah, elements are fun, players can make their own builds, but we're not doing anything with any other elemental reactions. So, sorry Geo mains. The next question was just, uh, was just so bad, I just, I have to read this one too. GameSpot asked, the world of Devat continues to expand, giving players so many challenges to complete daily. Domains, bosses, ley lines. Is there any chance we can see a cap increase for original resin or quicker regeneration to allow players to take on more of these challenges each day? To which the game developers replied, Domains, bosses, and ley lines are important means to farm character and weapon ascension materials, and resin are required to claim these items as rewards. Meanwhile, we're also providing more options for gamers to obtain character development items. For example, many characters and weapon ascension materials can be obtained and redeemed from events that we run periodically. That is the sound of me face finning, slapping my face with my own fin. What a political answer. You could have just said no. Well, for everyone who wanted a resin cap increase to at least 180 to represent a full 24 hours in the day, doesn't look like that's happening. The next question was pretty good, and we actually got a pretty decent answer. It didn't have a lot of specifics, but it's still a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. GameSpot asked if there would be a way for people to replay the story events of things like the Summertime Odyssey and Scaramouche's initial story quest. The developers say that they're looking into solutions to view the past cutscenes for some of these events, but that they're not integral to the Archon Quest storyline, but that one of their focuses is intelligent management of past content, to use their words. I think this would be really cool, not just for past cutscenes, but for any of the cutscenes we've seen before because some of them are just really gorgeous. The next question was about costumes and cosmetics, and GameSpot asked if the Traveler will ever be able to receive any of these cosmetics or costumes. And the devs said that it's an intriguing idea, but they're not planning on it, or at least they're not going to share anything on their potential plans for it. So basically, don't count on it. And the second to last question is actually a follow-up to the previous costume question about Aether and Lumine and the special cosmetics they have in different cutscenes, and if we'll be able to use them in-game. I know a lot of people want this, and it seems like it would be pretty easy to implement, especially since it's already in the game, but unfortunately the devs say that they have no plans to implement this. At least, no plans that they want to share with us. The final question was about crossovers, specifically about Hoyoverse title crossovers, and if we might see any characters from other games like Zenless Zone Zero, Honkai Star Rail, or Honkai Impact 3rd ever make it to Genshin, just like the way that Kaching and Fischl arrived in Honkai Impact. To which the game devs replied, No, don't expect it because we're focusing more of our efforts on developing characters for Genshin Impact specifically, 
but if there are any crossovers, you will be sure to know about it. So sorry Honkai fans, it doesn't look like we're getting Alicia anytime soon. And that was the final question and answer. Overall, I wish we would have gotten more concrete answers for the positive aspects and the future development of the game, especially considering they don't seem to be developing any future combat endgame systems. This whole interview kind of reminds me of something I said in a video last year when Hoyo had some really bad management around their anniversary rewards, and that was this. Keep your expectations low, but your standards high. Hoyoverse has plenty of money and resources to give players the best experience they can, and they've been doing a really good job of that, but we should hold them to that standard, even if we know that it's unlikely to happen. Anyways friends, please let me know how you feel. If they don't end up developing other types of endgame combat systems, what types of endgame system would you like to see them develop? And if they did implement more types of endgame combat systems, how would you like to see them implement that content so it's fair and not just a playground for whales? And what do you think about my idea to use previously developed content in more unique ways? As always, thank you so much everyone, don't forget to like and sub if you haven't already, stay awesome, and until next time, may order guide you friends, can't wait to see you in the next one.